This is Code.org, and this looks terrifying, but it's not. It doesn't have to be, at least. All right, let's dive in. Getting started. Import text processor from your backpack or go copy and paste it. I have mine here. And what are we doing? We're going to write this method, get sentiment. Now, I really want to break this down because I feel like they describe it in the most confusing possible way. At least, I was confused a lot. That's all I'm saying. So, what's going on? We have a whole bunch of these, and by these, I happen to mean words and numbers. The numbers, and this is kind of important, are doubles. The words happen to be words. Well, also numbers, because, you know, why not? But, yeah, and they're going to be processed as strings. What they are asking for with all of this is they want a user to be able to pass a word, say, I pass able, and what they want the method to return if I give the method able is a double. What double? Negative 0.04. And if I give it the word, wow, this is long, uh, sure, Alabama, they want my method to return negative 1.02. Wait a minute. Is, is sentiment mean people have negative thoughts related to these things? <gasps> is Kaiser in here? Sorry, guys, we're, we're going to be distracted. Oh, nope, I'm good. Nope, totally good. Ant? Yeah, you guys have nice ants. Uh, education is positive. Yeah. Foods is negative? Food is negative? This thing is rigged. I'm not going to even tell you how much time I just spent doing this because that's embarrassing. So back to code. All right. Um, yes, we need to grab a whole big list. We need to be able to look through that list and have it output the number. Now, I've already done step two, I guess, right here. Just in preparation, I think it helps explain what we need. So I have my text, get sentiment, sentiment values, because we're going to be passing it this whole big list that's created by our file reader and whatever word we want to get. I could always do something if I wanted, like, you know, uh, this is going to be a double. So double um, right, number, num, sure. Boom. And then I could just do print out the num or something like that. Boom. All right, regardless, this is what we're going to pass it. Now I need to make the method. I'm headed over to text processor. I'm going to scroll way down here. And let's see. That was the name of it. We know we need to return a string. And by string, I mean double. So I'm going to do double. Actually, no, I'm not. First, we need to do public, then double. Now the name of the method, which is get sentiment. And it tells us right here, there's two parameters, a list of sentiment values, which I only know for certain what that is, is because of this, it's a string of arrays. And we need to have a word as a parameter. So, and the word they're going to be searching for. All right, so far, so good. And now what are we going to do? Well, like I said, we need to loop through these words and find the word that they would like us to find. I'm going to go ahead and do a double result right here. And I can just set it equal to zero or something like that. Or set it equal to nothing. Eh, what if we don't return anything? So I'll set it equal to zero just in case. Not the best idea, but regardless, boom. And then now I need a for loop looping through all of the information. Hmm, how do I want to do this? I'm actually going to do an enhanced for loop or a for each loop. Now, you could certainly do it this way. Right, this would work. And then you would just say, you know, sentiment get I or something like this. I'm going to do it this way, though, with it. It's usually called for each loop for uh, for string. I'm not going to say sentiment every time. That's going to go nuts. For a four string uh, value, and value is going to be what? It's going to be from sentiment values. So value is just going to represent one line of sentiment values. And sentiment values, one line is this, or is this, so on and so forth. So now with that being said, what do we got to do? We need to be able to find a word. To find a word in a string, if you've forgotten, head to documentation, head to string. The best way to do it, guys, is going to be index of. It's going to return the index where that item is located. So I'm going to do if, uh, let's see, uh, value dot index of the word we're searching for is greater than zero because index of returns negative one if that word does not exist. However, 
if over here I type in the word gates, what index of would return is zero because starting at index zero, the word gates appears. Even though we have all this junk behind it, it would still return zero, which is great. That means the word is present. Now, they do give us this handy hint telling us we should use parse double. So you might think, awesome, I know the line it is on, done and done. I'm gonna do something like, you know, value dot parse or parse double. Uh, value. This will err like crazy because you have a lot of letters and a comma in there and a whole bunch of junk. So what I would recommend doing is now we need the index of the comma. So int comma index because everything before the comma we need to be some murderings. So comma index value. Uh, maybe I should say sentiment. No, I'm going to stick with value. Value dot index of and then I'm going to do comma. So that's the index of our comma location. Wait for it. It's going to get more complex. So now we need the string that is after that. And we can't include the comma. So now I'm going to do string. Uh, uh, maybe the number that's left over or after the comma. And what will I say? I'm going to say value, which is this original string up here. Value dot substring. And I want everything, and remember we can use substring, if we only give substring one argument, it will give us everything after that character. So I'm gonna do commas index, but plus one, because I don't actually wanna include the comma itself, and the starting location is inclusive. So it will include this first character for the starting value, so I need to go one past that. Finally now, I have a string that's a double. So now I can say result, will be equal to double, that's the double class, parse double, and then what's my double here? It's gonna be this num string I just created, and then way down here, I should be able to return result, hopefully. And that didn't work at all. So that's that's cool, that, that worked very well, I'm glad. Oh, all right, greater than, oh, 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 I got it. Greater than negative one. I said it would be an index of zero. That is looking good for able. Let's keep going. Uh, nope, that's not happening. Gave. Gave is negative 1.6. You guys don't like to give things. <laughs> that's fair. You're like, I want to get gifts. I understand this. Students don't, don't buy me gifts. I don't need bugs. Um, all right. But uh, that's looking good. Mm -mm -mm. Nope. I'm not going to do songs. Uh, ooh, genius. Okay, genius is 0.53. Let's go. Boom. So this sounds complex, and that is because it kind of is. There's also more than one way to do this, of course. You don't actually need all these variables. I like them because I think it makes it more readable. You can do things directly. You also don't have to do this enhanced type of loop. Whatever you do, make sure you commit this stuff, guys, as you're finishing it. It's valuable to have later on. Onward.